Hey guys, welcome back to the Iron 5C channel. It is Aisha here back with another video. I am back after a couple of months of hiatus. Um, you know, as you guys have known in my last video, I made a video about me going to Trinidad and Tobago as a missionary, going down there and just preaching the word of God and stuff like that. So I am back. I went back in August 19th and I stayed there for a month. So I came back to America on September 19th. But yeah, y'all, I just wanted to talk about the experiences that I had in Trinidad and why it was so important to go. So Trinidad and Tobago is so special to me because it is my home country. I was brought up in Trinidad and Tobago. I was born in Trinidad and Tobago. My family is from Trinidad and Tobago. I actually moved to the States when I was four going on five. So pretty much I grew up in the United States. Um, Trinidad is actually located in the Caribbean in the Lesser Antilles. So it's all the way down south. It's very near South America. Actually a good point of reference to know where Trinidad and Tobago is, is actually looking at the South American map. And if you look at Venezuela, it's literally right here. It's, it's actually about five to seven miles off the coast of Venezuela. Uh, so I do have a lot of family still there and stuff like that. And God opened up a lot of doors and I have some family on my father's side who do ministry. And so I was able to do ministry with my uncle and my aunt. So the reason why I went to Trinidad um, was because the Lord put it on me to do it. Actually, if we're gonna be really honest, uh, for a couple of months, I was really struggling with the idea of going back to Trinidad uh, because I knew that uh, the Lord wanted me to share my testimony about you know, being delivered from homosexuality and many other things. Um, uh, but the theme of um, that uh, mission trip was that there's freedom found in Christ. So there are a lot of things the Lord really had to pull out from me because, you know, a lot of times it's so easy for us to stay in a comfortable state, in a comfortable, complacent state. Um, and a lot of times it's very hard for us to do things that are very uncomfortable. And that's exactly where God needs us to be. You know, we're not always going to be comfortable with the things that God is needing us to do. That's why it's called literally walking by faith and not by sight and stepping out in faith. Because there are going to be things that God calls us to be courageous and to be brave and to step out of the boat, you know. And so I was very hesitant at first um, to go to Trinidad. Um, until the Lord was like, hey, you know, you need to go. <laughs> because it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, it's not about me. You know what I mean? Um, and one thing that the Lord has really been speaking to me on was the decisions that we make not only impact our own selves, because a lot of times when we make decisions, we think, oh, it's only about me. It's all about me. You know, I'm going to make this decision. It's only going to impact me. No but it also impacts people around your life and people who you may not even know yet. And so that's why it's so important to step out when God calls you to step out. But y'all, at the time, I didn't want to step out, but eventually I did, thank God. But it's very important to always follow every instruction and every plan that God has for you. Every time God assigns you to something, follow suit with it because it's so important and you'll be amazed by how God will open the doors. I was slightly nervous. I actually remember on the plane, um, we were probably about 30 minutes out from Trinidad and Tobago. I had a moment and you know, I was like, oh snap, Lord, we're really doing this. Like, what is gonna happen? You know what I mean? You know, a lot of times we try to perceive what God perceives. We try to think how God thinks, but he says in his word that our ways are not his ways and our thoughts are not his thoughts. So I was trying to think of, how is God going to do this? How is God going to open this, these doors? What is he going to do? All this kind of stuff. So, you know, in my mind, I was kind of like freaking out and I was, I was acting in a state of anxiousness. But his word tells us to be anxious for nothing, but to continue to pray and make supplication and make our requests known unto God. And so, you know, at that moment, I was kind of freaking out because I was like, Lord, what are we going to do? And I remember uh, my uncle, he picked me up at the airport and he was like, okay, you know, we'll make a plan and stuff like that. Because he revealed to me too, like, you know, he didn't know, you know, what we were going to do, how we we're going to do it and stuff like that. 
but literally as soon as my uncle picked me up from the airport, opportunities, ministering opportunities started opening up and we were able to go to different places throughout Trinidad, different churches. We were able to go to different radio stations in Trinidad. And I always say this, it doesn't shock me every time, but the Lord appalls me by how when we take a leap of faith, how he, when he orders our steps and guides our path, and when we just let go of all control, he has already made the way. And that's why he already assigns it to us because he prepares us before he positions us. He sets things up and that's how he's able to order our steps because he knows what's gonna happen when we continue to follow his path. And it's just amazing and it appalls me every time how God always comes through and follows through with everything that he says. And the fact of the matter is, is that it doesn't happen in the way that we may perceive it in our minds, but it happens when we let go and we just say, Lord, you just do what you have to do. I'm just a willing vessel to be used by you. A lot of people asked me, especially when I came back, what was something that was really memorable about Trinidad and Tobago? Um, there's a lot. I know for one, definitely doing ministry with my uncle and my aunt. Um, that was something that was very profound and being able to uh, be underneath their roof and to, you know, have a good time, you know. <laughs> we had a lot of junk food, a lot of fried chicken, you know, a lot of like street food, like doubles, things like that. Um, but just, you know, like doing ministry with them, that was one of the most memorable things. Going to uh, different people's homes and praying for them and to encourage them um, with the word of God as well. That was something that really stuck out. Uh, definitely meeting and making a lot of kingdom connections with people. And um, I know I was also able to minister to a deaf ministry, which was something that was really awesome as well. Um, and, um, Oh, there's a whole bunch of things like it's like I can't pick one thing but the Lord really opened up a lot of ministering opportunities and I'm just so grateful for him uh, in regards to that but I know one thing that the Lord really did for me was a heart change for the longest time you know I didn't ne I never thought or I never saw myself going back to my country I always kind of avoided the topic about going back to Trinidad and stuff but, you know I, I didn't I didn't want to go back if we're gonna be really honest but being there for a month and being able to communicate with you know like many different people in the, bo the body of Christ and doing ministry with so many people um, and um, really spending time with family and things like that the Lord started to change my heart he gave me a heart change it was revealed to me when I was coming back because you know I was on the flight back and I had like a layover in Miami and um, you know I started crying and I was like Lord you know I, I actually I really miss my country I miss my family I miss you know a whole bunch of things and he renewed my love for Trinidad and gave me a deeper appreciation for it really grateful that he did that because you know that's a place where I am born, that's where all my family's from, you know, and of course, you know, I'm American, you know, I consider myself an American, but I also consider myself as a Trinidadian, um, and it's very important to not lose touch of where you came from and how you can help your country, even though you may live in another country, how you can help them, not only physically, but spiritually as well. I definitely want people to know that Trinidad is a place that is very beautiful. There's so many different races and cultures, so many different types of foods, so many different types of people. You know, of course, you know, they have corruption, they have a whole bunch of things. There's a lot of things um, that need to be worked on in Trinidad, but Trinidad is a beautiful place. And um, one thing I, I do want to say is that there is not without reason why Trinidad has the name Trinidad, right? Because Trinidad was a name given to Trinidad by Christopher Columbus. And you know, because he saw three mountains. And when you translate Trinidad from Spanish to English, it means La Trinity. And when you think of Trinity, the first thing that comes to my mind is the, the Holy Trinity. 
which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I really do believe that the Lord is reestablishing and calling his people in that nation to come back to him, to repent, to seek his face, and to turn from their wicked ways, to come back to Christ, their Savior. And I really feel that uh, for Trinidad, and not just for Trinidad, but I mean all the other nations. But there's not without reason why Trinidad is called Trinidad, why it's named after and it just amazes me every time because I'm like, Lord, you're doing something. And I truly believe that God has an awesome plan for Trinidad and what's in store for Trinidad and Tobago. I just wanted to say too, if God is calling you out to do something that you never thought that you would do in a lifetime, do it. <laughs> because it is part of your destiny. You know, a lot of times it's easier said than done. You know, um, I know for me, I struggled with it for the longest time, accepting my calling, especially that assignment going back to Trinidad. And I know I'll be going back there more often to do more ministry. Um, and it's difficult at times, but that's where that verse comes into play where it says, we walk by faith and not by sight, you know? and. Faith is also defined as faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And when you look at hope, hope is also defined as expectation. You're expecting something. And it's very important to keep your hope and your trust and your faith in Jesus Christ, especially when he gives you an assignment because he always prepares you before he positions you to where you need to be. It's very important to follow every assignment, every instruction that God has laid on your heart, most importantly, because it can have an effect on many others. And I just wanted to say too, our testimony is not something to be ashamed about. Our past is not something to be ashamed about or be in a state of guilt. That's exactly where Satan wants you to be. He wants us to be silent about what has happened to us. But my God is greater. And, he, and I remember King David said, if my God can deliver me from the lion and the bear, he can surely deliver me from the lion. And so when God has delivered you out of something, you become an overcomer. The Lord revealed um, these two different scriptures to me. I just wanted to share this before I go. One is found in 2 Peter 2, verse 18. The other scripture is found in Revelations 12, 11. Both of the scriptures have overcome. And you look at the Greek translation, they are two different words. When you look at the overcome in 2 Peter 2, verse 18, it's in correlation with the servants of corruption. It talks about false doctrine and things like that, and people being swept away by the currents of this world. And when you look at that overcome, it talks about you being overcome, though the, the things of this world, Satan is overcoming you. He's bringing defeat. You being overcome by the things of this world, which is a form of bondage, which makes you a captive. But when you look at the overcome in Revelations 12, 11, that overcome is in correlation to you, to you becoming an overcomer. You have conquered what was trying to confine you, what was trying to create you as a captive. You have conquered that through Christ Jesus. You have become victorious. So I just wanted to say, if God is ever calling you to share part of your testimony, whether it be to somebody on the street or whether it be to somebody in your church or anything like that, or calling you out to talk to a congregation about it or anything like that, do not feel ashamed or guilty because what Satan tried to use to consume you and overcome you, God has delivered you from that because you fully surrendered and submitted underneath him. So then you are able to resist the devil and he has to flee. And it's very important to understand too that we have become overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. So what God has delivered you out of, he uses our mess into messages. And so the very thing that tried to consume you, 
God has delivered you out from. So now you're an overcomer and you can preach to people who are who you who struggle with the things that you used to struggle with. And say, hey, there is hope found in Christ. There is freedom found in Christ. I'm telling you, what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it around for his people. So I just want to thank you guys for tuning in today. And I hope you guys have a blessed day. Stay on the lookout for more videos to come. Hallelujah.